today I'm here in the company of Mr. Kamran Ilahian. Thank you for spending some time with us. It's my pleasure. Um, you just gave a riveting talk about entrepreneurship and in your topic you've covered various subjects uh, that talks about the role of individuals in our world. My first question for you is, how would you define an entrepreneur? Well, entrepreneur is an agent of change that uh, looks at the situation, looks at the rules, studies them carefully so that uh, uh, he or she can break them properly, uh, you know, to quote Dalai Lama. And uh, if you look at the most successful entrepreneurs, were the ones who looked at the market, what rules were applying, and they figured out how they can disrupt it or disintermediate it and come up with a new way. So in my book, entrepreneurship is, regardless of what the situation you see, there is a way that you could win. And that ability to go and find the way to win says whether you are a good entrepreneur or not. A lot of bad things happen in everyone's life. That you cannot control, but the response you have to it can be extremely good and make you be a successful entrepreneur. Or you can see yourself as a victim and say, horrible things happen to me, I can't do anything, I'm helpless. So not giving up. Would that? Would you consider that? That's a, a key part of it. That's a key part of it, and uh, being uh, having the belief that there is always a way to make the things better helps you, drives you to look for the things, and uh, also having the ability to go talk to the market, talk to the potential uh, customers as soon as you can, because. The sooner you know what is working and what is not, and the more agile you are and dynamic you are, are changing it to more the things that are working, the higher are the chances for success. We're living in a very different world than five years ago, ten years ago. We're using iPhones now. It's connected the world. We're using Skype in your talk. You talked about that. We're using technology that are enablers, that are connecting people together. I call that, at an entrepreneurial level, collaboration across creative minds. How can we get people, without having to completely migrate, let's say, to, an, to America, where innovation and entrepreneurship is the bedrock of that country, without actually having to physically migrate, how can we connect people, especially with people who are living in the Middle East, with other creative minds around the world? Well, you have this thing called the internet, and uh, you have this thing called Facebook, LinkedIn, that are the perfect forums for people to get to know each other, and you don't have to come to America to learn everything. I would say use the internet, find friends, uh, find mentors that uh, can work with you, can help you. But every now and then, going to different parts of the world and see how it's done, staying in Silicon Valley, if you can, even once, for a few hours or a few days, is extremely beneficial mm -hmm. because you get quick exposure with your own eyes about how part of that ecosystem works. But if you cannot, that's okay. If you can, come a few days and see. It. And uh, if you can, stay a little bit longer and learn and carry that. If not, watch the videos about the, uh, uh, about, uh, the entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley. Friend them on Facebook, on LinkedIn, ask them questions, follow their tweets, see how they think, how they react, because they hear in the news, you see how you react, and how they react and how they come and from each interaction learn. So using the tools that's available to us, we can connect with one another and come up with ideas and ultimately if the idea is good enough, we can implement it yes. and, and grow it. Um, you've been to the Middle East many times. What are the, some of the characteristics that's different in this market versus, other, versus your home base of, of, of the US? Well, in general, uh, 
every country has got its own characteristics. Uh, the is it as fast paced? Is it as robust? Or is it is is it uniquely um, um, characterized to the Middle East? And I'm I'm asking this question because I, I want to get to a, an issue. Um, we are more reliant on governments here versus North America where we're more reliant on ourselves. Mm -hmm. Do you, have you sensed that? Well, obviously because of GDP per capita for uh, the citizens of UAE is quite high and a lot of uh, services, education, healthcare are uh, provided for them, it could cause some people not to have the hunger or the need mm. to go and achieve a lot more because they already have a comfortable life. Right. Uh, on the other token, the immigrants who come here, the diaspora who leave some other countries that don't have those basic needs, then they are hungry and they want to do that. This is a common thing I've seen uh, even in immigrants who come to US. Mm. The first generation are very hungry, they work very hard, they try to be innovative, do something. Their next generation is less uh, uh, less dedicated to that, less hungry. And by third, fourth generation, um, you see a lot of that ambition or whatever is reduced because people have good life thanks to the accomplishment of their parents and um, they don't have a huge motivation to go and bring change. But in every place, there are ideas, there are things that inspire people. There are teachers who inspire people. There are ideas who inspire them. And you can see when uh, I talked about the We Day in California, the campus party that started from Spain, these kinds of things inspire people in all over the world, in many different countries, and people rise up to go home and do some incredibly amazing stuff. Thank you very much, Comrade John, for your time. Um, so as to end this conversation, as Steve Jobs said, stay hungry, stay foolish. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Pleasure.